Howdy folks, I'm Aaron, welcome to Lowe's Joinery. Today's video, we're gonna be having a look at a drop of this stuff. Boom, it's Valspar. Okay then guys, so a bit of a background on the video before we uh, crack on with the spraying. Basically, the uh, reason behind this one is I've done a video on spraying some Farrow and Ball paint. And in the comments, a chap mentioned uh, the drying time on the Farrow and Ball uh, is quite a long time, really. And one, one of the, the chaps in the comment really apologised here. I, I can't remember your name. Um, mentioned, have I tried Valspar? And up to this day, no, I haven't. So... I had an opportunity to use it. I needed a Dulux colour, which is a Salesbury Stone. Don't know why they call him all these fancy names. It's just a cream to me, but who are we to argue? So I got this in a satin wood. Cost me £19 for one litre. So uh, we're gonna have a look at it. I'm gonna see what it mixes like. I'm gonna see how thick it is out the tin. Have a look how it sprays, most importantly, what the finish is like. Just a quick overall, quick view of the uh, the whole product, really. So, yeah, stick about, have a watch, and I'll catch you at the end with the review. The end of the review. The ending of the review. Okay, then, guys, so we're in the spray booth now. Call it spray booth, spray room. A small spray room as well. Going to crack this tin of Valspar open now. I know you probably already know this, and it is common sense, but... The tints that they use, if it's left, they may start settling. So just give it a good stir or a good shake up. Don't know why I give it the smell test, I always do. So that's the colour we're looking at. Like I say, it's just a fancy cream, really. It's quite thick paint. And you get this mixed. Another little tip, if you can get yourself a sleeve of these, they're absolutely amazing plastic cups. Get them from any auto body shop uh, that sells car paints and stuff like that. They're not they're not expensive at all. You get I don't know I think probably fifty in a sleeve. I've got a load just up there, but yeah, they're everywhere. I will keep the paint in them. I'll just put a little uh, seal over the top just to stop it skinning over, and obviously just saves keep mixing paints all the time. Need to get some water back in a minute. Okay then guys, so I've got the radiator cover here. Yeah, it's what we're spraying. Surprise, surprise, another radiator cover. Um it's all prime sanded. 240 on the face, I've gone up to 320 on the edges, giving it my normal uh, normal treatment for the edges, high grit, sand, no fancy sealers or anything here, you don't need them, so don't be drawn into any of that fool. Then yeah, get some paint on it hopefully. That brand new tin of paint, don't know if you that'll focus there. See them bits? Always strain your paint.
Guys, so another day, another dollar. Um, gonna have a look at this cover now, see what the durability is like. Uh, then I'm gonna denib it, give it a second coat, um, just to get that full coverage, depth, and you know, just to really give it a belt and braces job. So, we'll go flip the camera, we'll have a look, and we'll go from there. Ooh. Okay, then, folks. So, first impressions. It's looking quite nice. Uh, definitely does need a second coat with obviously using the 1.4 tip I've had to thin it more than probably well definitely more than you would do with a with a heavy gauge tip with a 1.6 or 1.8 or something like that that's just my personal preference you can use the bigger tips it's totally down to you whatever you want to do so don't take my word on what I'm doing um, coverage is great like I say it doesn't need another one the Durability is quite good. I've given it a good scratch test, and it's not uh, it's not marking that well. It's quite nice. I think with the second coat, it'll really um, really build it up and give it some great protection. The drying time is a lot faster than. Um, the fire and ball paint which is amazing because this doesn't feel tacky at all now and it's quite damp outside the fire and ball paint takes a hell of a lot of time to dry properly from the underneath out um, but this doesn't feel you, you can you can you can actually not almost but you can actually feel on the fire and ball when you touch it your hand sort of sticks to it which obviously you know when something's still wet uh, on the paint <coughs> but yeah it's covered it's covered really nice quite happy for 19 quid as well uh, compared to the fire and ball which is about 23 i think 23 to 26 i'll double check well, i'll put a link in the description anyway to um to the price of the fire and ball compared to the to the 19 pound i spent on this uh, valve spar to get it mixed but yeah get this denibbed give it a second coat and um get the cover off to the customer Okay then folks, so what do I think of it? Not a bad drop of stuff at all to be honest. Um, I haven't used Valspar stuff for a long, long time. 
I also do painting and decorating as well as the joinery side of things and I've heard a few horror stories about their products before and it kind of puts you off, well it put me off anyway, I don't know if anybody else feels the same. Yeah, and you, you kind of stick to what you know anyway, so a lot of people don't like to try new things but it's always good. First impressions, not a bad drop of stuff, the drying time is a lot better than the Farrow and Ball. This is not a complete comparison to Farrow and Ball, it's just obviously I'm relating that to this or this to that because the video I done prior and obviously the chap mentioning try this so don't take this or take it with a grain of salt should I say. Uh, yeah but drying time compared to that and to others as well uh, not too bad it, it dried fairly fast um, put the infrared heater on just to give it that just to cook it quickly and then uh, just let it do its own thing naturally so yeah not not a bad drop of stuff 19 pound 19 pound for a litre uh, a litre is more than enough to do what I needed I've probably got probably got that much left so I don't think I'm ever going to use that again unless the client calls me back and wants something else so kind of surplus to requirements unless I make a, a an item and decide to spray it in it but yeah quite you know on a hold very durable fast drying uh, price reasonable obviously service I went to my local B&Q and got that made up so that was obviously 100%, that was brilliant. I had it in like five minutes. Really happy guys. If you've tried it, let me know in the comments. If you've tried anything else, let me know in the comments. I'd love to go and give it another try. Uh, I do a lot of spraying. I've tried a lot of different paints out there. The only ones I don't really go for are the, like the AC or the pre capped I don't really go for those that much. I tend to stick to the water-based. So if anybody's got any recommendations, drop a, a comment down below and I'll have a read and if I can try some I'll certainly do a video and uh, see what we go from there so yeah if you did like the video folks give it a thumbs up if you didn't give it a thumbs down let me know in uh, in the comments and obviously we can look at what I'm doing wrong uh, if you haven't already please consider subscribing if you're new here hello please consider subscribing check the backlog and guys have a lovely day lovely weekend whenever you're watching and I'll catch you on the next video. See you later.